Okay, so sorry, there was a few technical difficulties for a few people dialing into the webinar this morning there. So I think we're all good to go. So we're kicking off with our first one of 2019. And we decided to try and tackle this myth that TAS Books has a number of gaps versus Sage 50. So we've been speaking to a few people and we're going to tackle some of those this morning. Uh, before we do, I'm just going to kick in with a, an agenda there and cover off what we're going to look at this morning. So for anybody that doesn't know us, I'm going to give a quick overview on Pimbrook. I'd like to mention a couple of testimonials um, that uh, just to, I suppose, show about our customer service. Um, I'll introduce you to the list of features. Um, Sharon then will take over and go through the demo. We will have a Q&A at the end. Now everybody is muted and we're going to use the chat box to take questions. If we do run out of time, we have them all recorded so we will get back to you individually. Um, and again, we'll leave our contact details there if you do require any further information. So. Pembroke, well, I suppose, first of all, we're very proud and delighted to announce that we've been made partner of the year across the product range. And that follows on with three consecutive years of being the Sage 50 and payroll partner of the year. And um, it's all done by teamwork, I have to say. I may lead the charge, but it's all the people behind the scenes uh, on Sharon's team and that, that uh, produce all the good work. So we're around for, well, it's going on 17 plus years now at this stage. We've well over 1,300 customers. We specialize in Sage 50 and payroll. But what we do have, we have on our team there, and we were very lucky to acquire Collins, who's, who's also listening in on the webinar this morning, from the Sage TAS team. So we do have expertise on the TAS front. We pride ourselves on our customer service, and we know, though, that we're not perfect, and every day we have to strive every day to ensure that we keep that exceptional customer service up. And we're based in Dublin and Waterford. So a couple of terms I suppose I just wanted to refer to on the client testimonials was things like people using terms such as professional, efficient, committed, excellent, best company, uh, staff being helpful. Um, all of these words are, you know, we're very proud to be associated with these brands and for them to use terms like that um, about us, we are absolutely de delighted. And I suppose the one we want to finish on is our product knowledge and our customer care. Okay, so let's get down to what we're here for is the list of features. So we're gonna run through some of these. Again, they're not all of the features that we feel are going to bridge the gap between TAS and Sage 50. We feel there's plenty more that's actually going to accelerate Sage 50 past TAS. What we're gonna start off with is departmental budgeting. And that will leave, lead very quickly into reporting. And we've got a number of reports that we want to show you, but also the type of reports. And that's anything from our standard batch reporting. We've got some Excel reports. And we can also show you how you can change a report. And um, we'll cover the foreign currency. We'll show you the bank reconciliation. I know it was one that was brought to my attention, but I genuinely feel that um, Sage 50 is, is very simple to use. We can just touch on bank feeds there because obviously we need to have a bank account which due to GDPR, et cetera, and personal data, we can't show you the actual um, bank um, account details, but we'll show you there on some screenshots. We've picked one third party integration. There are hundreds of integrated solutions that go with Sage 50 and there's little or none with TAS. So even if Sage 50 has a gap, we certainly can source um, other add-ons to Sage 50. So we're going to pick one up and just show you very quickly how, how easy they are to use. And we're going to finish up on um, backups. They're important. And of course, you don't need them um, until that, that fatal day. But we'll, we'll show you how easy it is to do a backup. So I'm going to hand you over to Sharon, who's going to, um, who's going to go through the Sage 50 there, as she is more the expert than I am. So thank you, Sharon, if you want to take over. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, hi, I'm just going to switch over screens there to um, my Sage 50. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you the departmental budgets. Um, now, TAS does have budgets uh, within, within, within the software, um, but within just to show you the comparisons of it, with Sage 50, you do have multiple budgets. You have a standard budget and, budget and you have advanced. So within your settings, you can see if you go into company preferences, and I'm just going to say yes to close my window there. You can see within the budgeting tab, you have advanced and standard. 
Standard just gives you the one level of budgeting, so you can just budget by your nominal account, your nominal record only. But when you choose your advanced, you have an option to go by nominal code. You can go by departmental overview, or you can go by a departmental in-depth. And my set, mine set up for in-depth uh, departmental. So if just to show you that, if we go into departments, Okay, and if we go into the budget section, we have a section here related to budgets and you can drill into it, into your nominal at each level and set up a budget for each nominal and then that will give you an in-depth uh, reporting. Okay, so if I cancel out of there and go into my reports. Okay, and the first one I'm going to show you is my profit and loss by department. So this is going to give you the advanced budgeting. And then you have several reports here that you can run, and I'm just gonna run it for 2018. Okay, now you can see here when I run this report, I've done it for all levels of, of my departments. So I have departments one to seven here, and this is my report showing all, and you can see the breakdown. But if I minimize that, I can actually run that report and I can select the specific department that I wanna run it for. So I can say my department is, and I can select my department number two, and again, I just want to run it for 2018 and click OK. So this is actually just running through all my departments and just pulling out my profit and loss just for department number two. Um, so it just gives you the in-depth. And you can see later on we have other reports that, is, that will also d drill into this reporting feature that we have. Um, for Excel reporting, what have you, and I will show you that later on um, on how you can do this on a, on a wider, wider level. It just takes a minute or two to run through. That because we're just running it for one department, it just takes a little bit longer. So you can see I'm running my report from, from January to December for 2018, and this is just department number two. Okay, and you can see my totals. And if I pull up my other report, okay, you can see them side by side there. So this is my all departments. Okay, so another feature we have there is for batch reporting. Okay, so um you have the option to set up monthly reports, management reports, um, and then run them in just one clean, one, one clean sweep. So what I'm gonna do is go into tools and into my batch reporting. Okay, and I have one set up here for monthly reports. And if I run that report, and again, just January to December, and I'm gonna click okay. Okay, and you can see I've run my report there, but I've actually got three reports. I've got my period trial balance, I've got my balance sheet in the second tab, and I've got my profit and loss. And that's very easy and quick to set up as well. So if I close out of that for one moment and I go in and I can edit that report, I can then add in a report to there. So you can see if I go into my reports, I have a list of all my reports that are available to me that I can run through, select which report I want. So I've got three there at the moment. So if I go into my nominal and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into and select my report. So I'm going to select my profit and loss. Okay, I'm going to select this one with prior year values and I'm going to add. Okay, and again, I can just save that report and run it again. Okay, again, my criteria details. I want to run it between January and December with my chart of accounts. Okay, and now you have four reports there. So you have my, my period trial balance, my balance sheet, my profit and loss, and of my profit and loss with prior year values. Okay, so I can see the actual breakdown. So on that, um, you can see here that with these reports, certain reports are drillable. So I can drill into these reports. Anything here that I want to have a look at, I can actually drill into. So if I select my my profit and loss, um, my profit and loss reports, I can see there where we're looking at the general hotel. I can drill in and it'll give me a breakdown of my criteria. So I can see my 4,000 for sales and I can drill that in again. So again, and as I'm drilling into these, it's opening them up into a new tab. 
So again, I can still flick back through and see my other reports, but I've also got to drill down into my criteria and my nominal category. Okay. Okay, so I'm moving on. I'm just going to show you on, on report design. And again, I know with TAS, um, you don't have a report design. You can customize reports or edit reports. And Sage 350, there is a comprehensive set of tools that you can add logos, add fields. And I'm just going to show you a simple, simple uh, adding a logo to the report design. So if I go in and I can highlight any invoice that I have there and I can go into print. Okay, and I do have one here with a logo already added. So you can see I've added in my logo, but just to show you how that is done, I'm going in, I have a set of layouts here. Okay, and if I scroll down, I can select any of these, these layers, layouts. Okay, and as you see, we have a lot of layers that you can start. So you find the one that you want to work with. Okay, I'm just going to use my standard layout here. And again, if I preview that, I'll just show you that there's no logos, nothing on that report at the moment. So I can close and I can click on edit, which just brings you into the report design. Again, this is where you can add fields, move fields, change font, so you can totally customize the, the layouts, reports to suit you. So I'm gonna add in a logo here. So I'm gonna add an image. I choose where I want to put it. Okay, and I can browse my PC or network for it. So I have a logo there saved. So if I click on browse, there's my logo. Okay, and then you can resize that to suit you. So you can make it bigger or smaller. You can move it around. I'll make that slightly bigger. Again, I can move my invoice. I can make that bigger as well. I can change the font. I can underline it. Okay, and then I can save my, my layout. So file, save as. Give it a new name. Okay, and save. Okay, so I can close that out now. And if I go back to my list, I should see it at the bottom of my list there. And I can right click there and I can change the description there if I want to as well. So I can completely change that to Pinbrook. And okay. And if I preview that, you can see this change the name to Pinbrook Invoice, and there's my logo and my font changed. Okay. So it's that easy to add a field or add or change fonts um, within your invoice. And you can do that across the board. You can do that with your purchase orders, your sales orders, and your statements. Now, just jumping across, I'm going to show you some Excel reporting. Um, now, as I was showing you your departmental report there a few minutes ago, um, you can actually, we have designed uh, a, a, an extensive uh, report for Excel, and it gives you a departmental overview of your profit and loss. Okay, so this is giving, this is drilling directly into my Sage data, so I can update. Okay, it's just telling me that my connections have updated. So if I run my report, okay, and I'm just going to change the date there to the first, the first. 2018 and update. Okay, and it's just telling me that I've updated all my rows uh, within my data. Okay, so you can see here that I've got a list of my, I have a subcategory, so I've got my sub of my nominal codes and my departments. Okay, going across. So I can see here within my sales of my general hotel, I've got accommodation and I've, it's 94,000 there. And if I flip back into my Sage, okay, and if I go back to my departments and into reports, and I've got my departmental profit and loss there. And if I run that, 
And again, it's for the right chart for counts. I'm going to do it from my previous year. Click OK. OK, and you can see a breakdown there. So if I open that up. You can see the breakdown. So you've got your 94, 96. So it's giving you the same report, but you can see it across the board. So you can see every field, every department going across on one sheet. And again, back to my report, you can see that it's just for one department there. OK. Now, I'm just going to move on to Foreign Trader. OK, so I'm just going to close that out. I'm just going to show you how quickly and easy it is to set up um, Foreign Trader within Sage 50. So first of all, I don't have Foreign Trader set up, so I need to set up my wizard. And if I go in just to show you, if I go into Help and About, you can see in here um, what's, what features are switched on or switched off within the software. So if we scroll down, you can see that I've got my foreign trader there and it's not switched on. So to switch it on, I just need to run through, um, again, just to show you within, your, within the customer section, I've got my UK company set up here, but at the moment I can't change uh, my currency. It's grayed out. So to switch it on, we're just gonna run through a quick wizard. So if you went to tools, activation, and enable foreign trader, Okay, and just say yes, it closes all other windows and it brings me into the wizard. So if I want to set up my foreign trader, yes. Okay, you can change your nominal code if you need to. In this case, I'm going to take, keep the default for my revaluation nominal code, which is 7906. And I'm going to click next and finish. Okay, so it's my foreign trader set up. Now I can go into my customer. Now I have my customer set up. I've no activity there. So at this stage, I can go in. I can open up my customer. Okay, and now I can go into my default tab and I can change my currency. So I can select pound sterling and click on save. Now you do need a bank account to represent the, the, the currency that you're using as well to receive payments and make payments through. So if I go into my bank account, I can do the same in here. So I've got my UK bank account set up. And again, click on edit, opens up your bank account. And again, I can change my currency here. So I'm just going to change it to pound sterling. So you can see now when we go in to do an invoice or a credit note. So if I open up my invoices, I can now do a new invoice for my B1 design, which is my UK company. So B1. Okay, and I can, I have currency set up, but it has no exchange rate at the moment. Okay, so as I'm doing my invoice, I can go in and I can enter in my exchange rate. Okay, I can, yes, I can go ahead and call up my products, do my invoice as normal, save, and I can see there that that is at my Pound sterling. So when I print out my invoice or layouts, everything shows in sterling. Okay, so it's that straightforward to set up. Okay, so within my bank, then I'm going to show you how to do a bank reconciliation. Okay, again, it's very straightforward within Sage 50. When we go into our bank account, you have an option. So you can highlight your bank and you have an option at the top to reconcile. Okay, which brings you into your bank statement. So this is where you can put in your statement reference. Okay, your end balance. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to just put in my end balance. Okay, and my end date. So at the end of your statement, what you're going to reconcile up to. So I'm going to just... Okay, and click OK. And all this does is filter out my transactions up to this day to make it easier for you to do a reconciliation. Now, in some cases, if you need to, you need to reverse a re reconciliation, you can. There is a reverse, uh, the reverse option within the software. Um, hopefully, we won't have to in this case. Okay, and I go in and it gives me a list of my transactions that are available to me. 
So I can see straight away there, I'm going to work down through and highlight my transactions I need to reconcile that's on my statement. So they're all on my statement. And I can see my trend, the total amount, I can click on match. So I can do them one by one. So if I clear that, I'm just going to show you, I can do it one by one and I can see my balance going through there or I can highlight the batch of them together and click on match. Okay, so I've got a list of, all, that's everything that's on my, on my statement. So if I go down to the bottom here, I can see what I've matched against my statement balance and I can see I've, at the moment I've got a difference. So if I go down through my statement, I find my difference and I can see there straight away that it's my bank charges. So I've missed out, that's why I haven't entered them in. So I don't need to come out, my, out of my bank reconciliation at this stage. I have these tools at the top where I can actually go back in and make a payment directly in here. I can enter in my date with the date of the bank charges were for. Okay, I can put in my reference. My nominal code for bank charges. Any other information that you might have and I can put my 55 and it's my tax code. For Okay, and if I save that, that's going to be entered straight into my bank, bank rec. Or it should be, if I saved it. <laughs> i just go through that again. My bank account. My bank charges, my value, and save. Okay, and I can see there at the bottom of my screen is my bank charges have gone in and I've got my difference is zero. So I can go ahead, I'm happy with my bank rec, everything's balanced down to my, the bottom of my statement, and I can go ahead and click on save. So. Now, because I saved it and haven't reconciled for any reason that I've halfway through my statement, um, I can go back in and click on reconcile. And when I go back in, it'll ask me if I want to use saved or discard saved. So if I click on use saved, it'll actually bring me exactly to where I've left off if I need to double check anything or just even to reference. And once I'm happy with it, then I can hit reconcile. Okay, take a second to go through and that's it reconciled. Now what it also does, if you go back into your reconciliation screen and click open, okay, and go into view history, it'll give you a PDF of all your reconciliation. So you'll have every, re every, every reconcile that you've done uh, within your software and you can open them up in PDF just to review them. Okay, and it gives you exactly what you've just done. Okay, so you have an option then for bank feeds. And again, it's, this is what Steph was talking to. We can't go right through with this because we need to connect it to your bank account. But it just brings you into um, it where it feeds directly with your bank account and pulls in um, all your transa transactions automatically. So you can select your bank, so whether you're, where, where you're based, so what bank you are. So if we said Bank of Ireland and click on Next, and then it gives you an option to sign in. And this is actually signing in with your banking credentials. Um, so it's just going to pull through, you know, your, your ID and your password that you can enter in. And once you have done that, then it'll open up. Um, so there's your banking credentials screen. I'm just going to close out of that. Once that's gone through, okay, you can actually open up. A, you'll see, so this is the details from your bank account. And these are the details are from Sage. And you can set up rules to match your bank account to Sage. So if they have the same reference number or anything that dates and references that will automatically um, link to each other that you can connect um, that they'll ma match. And then you can go back in and manually match any other ones that you want. Um, so it's a great feature. It's a great little tool within the software. Um, and so once it's set up, it's very easy to set up. You just need to have your banking passwords to, to set that up. Okay. Now we were talking about third party software uh, and again there is a number of different third parties that you can get um, to integrate with your Sage 50 
and um, you have multi locations you've got back to back ordering um, and again you know you can import transactions into your sage and that go directly to your ledgers and um, but in this case i want to do an import that goes into my invoicing module and this is where your third party comes in so i've installed a third party software here so i want to invoice and um, import directly into my invoices so if i open up my file so i have a third party file available okay and if i just open up one of them you can see straight away that it's just an excel sheet it's going to be an invoice import it gives you your account reference your date and you can see here i've got three invoice numbers for the same invoice um, and what that is is three different lines within the invoice so they'll be that'll be exported from your third party software it puts it together and then this is the format that we use to import it and said so it's very straightforward to, in, it, to use i have it installed already so i'm just going to go into invoice csv okay and i can browse for my file in this case i browse for my january file and you can see again this is where i was saying that you've got their three lines so it's one zero zero six one two and three that's just showing i've got three lines within my invoice so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to load that up okay it's going to say are you sure you want to import these into your sage and i'm saying yes okay and it's telling you that product line is okay it's okay and i've imported and again and if i browse that again I can go to my February file and I can import there. So I've got a duplicate invoice. So it's telling me straight away if I've got a duplicate line item. And again, you don't have to import it if that's the case. So it's very user friendly. Now, if we give it a second to refresh. In fact, I just log out. Back in. Okay, and if I go back into my invoicing module, you can see there that I have my invoices and they have imported. So if I double click on that invoice, you'll see that I have my invoice and I've got my three separate lines there with my values that were on my import file. And then that can be import updated to your ledgers as normal within Sage. So you can, you can import anything into, you can get third party software to import sales orders, purchase orders, quotations um directly into that module and then update it to the ledgers okay um now i'm just going to move on and show you my show you the automatic backups i said as you know backups are so important it's when you don't have them is when you need them and usually and prior to these this version of sage you used to have to have everyone log out of sage to take backups but in this version you don't have to so you have a backup scheduler, so you can schedule a backup and you can set that up to, you know, back up at certain times. So here's my two companies is telling me I've got one user logged in. I've scheduled backups. I've got comments made. I've got no errors. My scheduled backup was done and I can also connect it to OneDrive, which I can talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and you've got your settings. So in your settings, you can decide how often you want to back it up. Uh, what time, if you want to back it up every hour, and what you want to back up. Maybe you just want to just back up your data. If you've got a lot of customized reports and layouts, you can back up them. Um, and again, this is where you can select you, uh, Sage links with Office 365. Um, so you could back up and select your folder that you want to back up in your 365 location. Okay. It tells you what users are logged in. You can go come in here and you can check your backup results so you can see if it was successful if you've got any errors on your data warnings comments and you can work through them so you should just you should watch this and keep an eye on it but you will always if you have a backup here it will back up how often you have set it up to do and your backup files okay so that's a great feature um, in this version okay so that is the new features within um, stage and some some of the comparisons we do have a few more that we can go through and we have them um, we will be doing different separate webinars and videos on them um, and one of them is office 365 and I'm saying saying to you there that the system does link with 
Office 365. So it'll give you an overview of any sales by period, accounts due, or transactions. You've also got Go Cardless, which is a direct debit software that you have that you can use and it'll integrate with it. And you've also got Stripe, um, which is also a way of requesting payments and receiving payments. And again, we've got other videos and webinars coming up, which, which, which will show, show these. Now, if anybody has any questions, uh, we're going to open up. I said we've got the team here. Um, so if you've got any comparison questions or anything, if you write them on your chat bar on the left, and we can come back to you. And if we don't get through through them all for any reason, we can, we can come back to you via email or we can give you a call on them. That's brilliant, Sharon. Thank you very much uh, for that. I think that's quite comprehensive on some of the features there that have been uh, covered uh, across. <clears throat> um, right, so we'll see. Have you got any there, Sharon, you want to tackle first? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's a, if in Taz, you can do a reconciliation with your age report, with your day book reports um, against your trial balance. Okay, I'm actually gonna jump back into the software to show you this, and I think I know what you're talking about. Within TAS, there's one report that can reconcile um, against your trial balance, and with Sage, you've got a day book, and normally what you have to do is run a day book report for you know your invoices, your credits, your receipts. Now, we have actually designed a report that will handle this, so if we go into your customers and into reports. Okay, so we've got a day book customer report reconciliation. Now, if I run that report. Okay, and I can run it up to 2018. Okay, so this report is actually giving you invoices and credits, the whole lot going right the way down. So if I go to the very end, I can see my totals. And now if I leave that up and I just go to my trial balance, and I think this is the report you're talking about. And I run my trial balance for the same date range. Okay, you can see there that that's matching what's on my debtor's control account. And we have that report as well for your creditors. So you've got one one for your age debtors and creditors. So you only have to one, run the one report to do a comparison. Okay, so that's my total there. And there's my total there, which matches. Okay. Yes, that, that one came directly from an accountant actually that said that it was a, <coughs> a big gap there. So we're delighted to have um, matched that. I, I see one coming through there, um, Sharon, regarding, uh, I suppose, from a technical point of view, when when do they have to upgrade? Now, my understanding is it's not that they're saying Taz is end of lighting today or tomorrow, but I suppose what we want to bring to people's attention, if you end up having to get new hardware, i.e. PCs um, or servers or anything like that, and you're going to try and put old software onto new technology, you may fail in that. It may go on but it certainly is not guaranteed or possibly recommended. No. So it's not necessarily that we're saying you got to upgrade today, tomorrow, next month, or by the end of the year, but be very careful that you find yourself, if you do change anything or a PC goes and you have to reinstall something. Am I correct in saying that, um, Sharon? Yeah, absolutely. And what can happen as well is when you install the software, it may even install okay, but you might have performance issues. So when you go to use certain features within the software, they may not work They just because they wouldn't have been tested on the new platforms. So I suppose really all we're trying to bring to people's attention is just be very careful you don't find yourself in a situation that effectively your system becomes down because you can't put it, install it anywhere. <clears throat> so we're happy to talk about those on an individual case by case basis. Yeah, absolutely. And I have the system requirements. If anyone needs them, I can send them through as well. Okay. You want to take the next one there? Yeah. Is there a cost in changing over? Um, well, yes, there, there, there would be. Um, and again, we can, it'll depend on your software and, you know, what versions you have, how many users, how many companies. So again, we can take that offline. We can get Gavin to give you a call with any prices that you may have, you know, to prices in comparison, depending on your requirements. Okay. Uh, I see one there, Sharon. I think this tied into the previous one about legislation. Uh, if there is a change in legislation, like I suppose the GDPR and stuff like that, 
has has anything been backfilled into TAS to cope with that? Uh, no, there's uh, there's no no building on the on TAS as in no new features, and uh, no upgrades will be on any of the old software. Um, so you know, for any for for, for example, with UK, you've got digital. Um, you have to make in tax digital. Yeah. You, that won't be put in, in any of the older softwares. You will have to upgrade to to get get that facility. Um, is that even for yeah. users? If I want to gain an extra user, anything? Uh, I believe it's not. No, I think you have to. You have to move. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you have any more there? You can pick off quickly. Uh... I think what we'll do is there's a few there. They seem to be quite specific, guys. So I think what we might do is we might talk to you individually. And I'm conscious of people's time there. We've overrun slightly. So uh, I suppose we've left the contact details up there. We'd be happy to take any questions again offline. Um, and once again, thank you very much for taking the time out to join us there this morning. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon.